Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary with a knife video. Today I've got a pretty fun video. Uh, this is going to be a comparison between two knives that I really, really like, and in fact would actually recommend either one. If someone caught, you know, if someone messaged me and said, "Hey, should I get this?" I'd be like, "Yeah, it's a great knife." Uh, one is the Cold Steel Recon One. The other is the Cold Steel Code Four. Both of these knives are knives that I love. I've had both of them for quite a long time, and I've had. These are both the newer CTSX HP versions. I've also had the OS8 version of both. So I've got a lot of experience with these two knives and carried both of them quite a bit. Um, now, I will say by way of compare or by way of introduction so that you guys know, um, you can get both of these in all of the same blade shapes. Okay, so I've got two different blade shapes here. This is clip point, this is tanto, but this knife and this knife both come in either spear point, clip point, or tanto, okay? So that's going to affect, you know, your choice, and it's going to affect this a little bit. What we're going to do in this video is when I get down to the blade discussion, I'll talk about the differences in these specific blades, okay? And really only only make a slight reference to the the other differences because they're, I'll, I'll talk about the general differences uh, just kind of in passing, okay? Uh, so, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Recon 1 is going to be nine and a quarter inches overall, 5.1 ounces. It's got a three and seven eighths inch blade and a five and a half inch handle. By the way, this knife is fairly thick at half an inch in pocket. That means it carries a little sort of heftier than the Code 4 which is eight and five eighths inches, okay, so uh, uh, over half an inch smaller, uh, much thinner at about three eighths of an inch thick, uh, lighter at 4.3 ounces, uh, blade length is three and five eighths rather than three and seven eighths, and the handle is five and one eighth inches long. Now, that means there's a significant difference in how these feel in pocket, right? This is taking up a lot more space than this one. Although, you know, you're getting a lot of extra reach and a little extra, although not much, extra cutting edge, okay? So uh, these two, obviously, the, the Code 4 is going to be much easier and more comfortable to carry while only making you sacrifice a little, especially if you're the kind of guy who only you know makes five or six cuts a day and, and you're not doing a lot of work with your knife, um, this is going to be the clear winner in terms of EDC. Now, if you have something that requires a little more work where you want that half inch because it's more hand filling and a little more comfortable then for prolonged use, then that's obviously gonna you know make the difference for you. But in terms of just ease of carry, and in how much weight and size you have to get in your pocket in terms of how much utility you get out of it, I think the Code 4 is the clear winner in terms of size and weight. Now, what about the blades? These blades, as I already said, they, they come in all of the same blade shapes, okay? The, the primary, the difference that's going to be a main difference between them is going to be the Recon 1 that you're gonna be getting a black blade, okay, they're all black. Uh, of course, the Code 4, all satin. In terms of actual blade construction, the Code 4, the blades are, are a little bit thinner behind the edge, okay? So maybe more like um, an American Lawman where it's very thin grind behind the edge. The, the Recon 1 is left just a little bit thicker, and I'm sure that's designed to be a little bit tougher, okay? So you've got a slightly thicker edge geometry, and the reality is the difference between these is fairly minimal, okay? You're only going to notice it maybe if you're cutting phone book paper or if you do some really slicey task. If you live in Canada, if you do, by the way, do you use your folding knife to open the bags of milk? I'd love to hear that from you. Uh, I do, and that's one place where you'll notice a difference in edge geometry. A knife with a good, thin, slicey edge geometry is going to open those milk bags a little easier for you. Uh, but outside of that, if you're doing outdoor use, if you're opening mail, if you're you know cutting cardboard, opening packages, the the edge geometry is not going to be as noticeable to you. Or especially if you're you know if you're bushcrafting and you're cutting wood, it's going to be almost negligible. So let's talk a little bit about these specific blade shapes. Okay, the main difference here is that on this knife you've got a lot more belly. Okay, now in a 
day-to-day -day use scenario, uh, that belly is going to be helpful if you're cutting food. Okay, let's say if, you, if you're the kind of guy who uses your pocket knife for making supper every night or for you know, cutting up the meat that you're gonna go out and barbecue, then you may appreciate that, that belly on a knife, okay? If your uses are primary sort of urban, around the house, task-oriented, utility-oriented jobs, then you may like a, a Tanto blade. I found the Tantos to be very utilitarian. So they're great for, you know, household tasks. They're great for cutting cardboard. They're great for opening packages. That secondary tip can often be used to reach in and cut something that maybe you can't get you can't get out this way. You can often reach in and, and now you've still got a tip even though the knife is kind of like this. Uh, so there's a lot of utility to that secondary tip uh, in terms of, you know, kind of utility tasks, okay? Where it doesn't work as well is, let's say you're, you're out in the bush and you're, you know, you're whittling or carving, not so great for that kind of use. Let's say you're skinning an animal, again, not good at all for that kind of task. Uh, you're going to notice you want that belly, that curved edge for those kinds of slicing tasks. Now, in terms of a defensive option, if you're a soldier, if you're a police officer, um, in terms of uh, being able to uh, slice an opponent, both of these are going to be fairly stabby blades, okay? The, the Tanto point is designed to be a little stronger, so you're less likely to break that tip off. Um, both of these though are actually going to, you know, and, and think about it with me for a second. If you contact a surface with this kind of emotion and you've got that belly and you're gonna slice into it, it's gonna perform pretty well for you, okay? On the other hand, if you contact a surface with that secondary tip right there and you slice that way, guess what? It's still gonna perform fairly well for you, right? It's, it's definitely different Okay, and maybe the one place where a Tanto shines is sort of a snap cut where you're making contact only briefly. Uh, yeah, that Tanto is going to bite pretty deep compared to uh, the more larger surface area of the, the knife with more belly. And the, that could be said of a spear point as well. Okay, uh, so that's how they're going to compare in, along those lines. Now, the one other area I haven't really spoken to is you know, emergency use, you know, cutting a seatbelt, that kind of stuff. And that really depends on what kind of a Tanto blade you have. Um, notice, if you're gonna, let's say you, I needed to cut this shirt off myself, that tip is right there. And it's gonna be a little difficult to make that cut, uh, to cut that shirt sleeve. Let's say I had an injury on this arm and I wanted to cut this off. Um, it's gonna be difficult, but it could be done. The clip point, Yee, yeah, not good, right? <laughs> you know, clip point is not a good rescue blade. Okay, so if that's the kind of thing you're thinking about, uh, really in that scenario, I'm gonna prefer a more blunted tip like the one on the Ultimate Hunter. And I'll bring this one back in for a different purpose later. Okay, so that's how these two blade shapes are gonna perform and you'll really have to pick and you can make that decision in both of these knives, all right? So whatever one you decide you wanna go with, you have all three options in both uh, the Recon 1 and the Code 4. So that's gonna be the blade. By the way, the CTS XHP steel is very good steel. Um, you know, it's comparable to any of the other good quality steels that we see used in knives, S30V, S35VN, uh, D2, you know, these are, I'm just listing steels that are gonna be pretty high performance steels. They're not super steels, but they're certainly better than 154CM, VG10, 14C28N. You know, they're kind of, you know, in my mind, the steel blocks kind of go, you know, down here where they're budget steels, in the middle here where they're kind of intermediate steels and they're very, they're all quite good. And then there are super steels, okay? So this is, the CTS XHP is not a super steel, but it's a very, very high performance steel. I will say this. I find uh, cold steel tends to have, or seems to be a little softer Rockwell hardness than other companies CTS XHP that I've tried, okay? So, uh, there you go. What about lock and deployment? Well, both of these are triad locks. Uh, let's see, <laughs> there we go. Both of them can open pretty quickly if needed. Of course, it never works on camera. There we go. 
but both of them can be pretty fast and smooth and I've noticed a significant difference since last year. The, the, once they upgraded to the, the CTSX HP steel, I'm wondering if they tightened up uh, tolerances and just cleaned things up in terms of production because most of my new cold steels are just a little smoother and a little tighter feeling than my older models, okay? Uh, maybe it's just my perception, but that seems to be the way. And I've done side-by-side -side comparisons uh, between an older and a, a newer cold steel. Like, so 2014, 2013, and 2015, or 2016. Uh, so try a lock, and crazy strong. And we know these are very strong. Um, we've all seen the tests, okay? The Code 4 is the famous Code 4 versus Sabenza test that got a lot of discussion, uh, both on YouTube and on Blade forums and in the comments of that video, okay? So... Uh, we're well aware that the triad is a very, very strong lock, and I'm not going to, you know, sort of rehash anything here. And now, just to say, very strong lock. One warning I will give you guys, if you haven't had a cold steel with a triad lock, they're tough, man. Like, it takes a fair bit of pressure to actuate those locks, and, and that positive lockup, most people who are cold steel fans, they like that. If you're the kind of guy who is, you know, flipping your knife open and closed a lot, you may go, man, this lock is really hard to work, and it is. Okay, so let, just be aware of that going in. If you've never used a cold steel and you're watching this deciding, the, the triad lock is very strong, but it's very stiff to, to actuate, stiffer than most other lockbacks that you may be used to. All right. Finally, let's get to the handle, and this is going to be a big difference. Now, one thing that I should point out is that for 2016, they didn't make any changes to the handle on the Recon 1 uh, like they did on the Lawman, although it would have been cool if they did make those changes. Anyway, uh, that's a different discussion. So it's the brick pattern G10 that you're used to from Cold Steel. It's extremely grippy. Now in addition, it's extremely comfortable. You know, that half inch with those nice chamfered edges just really, really fits in hand nicely. And it's very, very comfortable and really locks in. So if you're thinking, hey, I need a knife for more combat purposes, um, the, the Recon 1 is a really, really good option. It really does lock you into that handle. Not only that, but it gives you the option, and this is true of a lot of cold steels, but you could kind of choke down on this and hold it in almost a pistol grip fashion. You can get right up on it. Uh, because of that big flat spot, you've got tons of room for uh, your index finger up there for sort of finer detailed work, okay? So big, thick handle, very, very comfortable, and, and really locks you in. On the other hand, the Code 4 is definitely a thinner handle, and that thinness uh, over prolonged use can get a little uncomfortable, but as an EDC, you know, Knives designed for EDC are not designed for, I'm going to be using this knife for 10 hours every day, okay? That's, you know, if you want a knife that's going to be in your hand for hours, look at a butcher knife, okay? See those handles are big and round and comfortable. Uh, not so on a lot of EDC blades. However, you still have the option of choking up on this knife for detailed work. There's plenty of room here for a finger. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't say it works well when in a lower ch choked down position, okay? It's just, there's not a lot of grip there. It's not very comfortable. Uh, it's kind of this or this, and that's about it. Uh, it is thinner, and it is slicker, okay? Now, I've used this knife a lot, and I've never had an issue with it not being grippy enough. And I've also never had an issue with me, with being afraid that when I stab into something, my it's my finger's going to come up. It still has a pretty deep finger choil there, and it does swell a little bit. So you give that a good squeeze, you know, you're hard pressed to to slip up onto it. Um, but there's you can't say that it's just as good as the Recon One. Okay, it's good and it's functional, but it's not as good as the Recon One in terms of uh, you know prolonged use nor in terms of sort of a combat use where you have some concern about either dropping the knife or it being taken from you or your hand slipping up. There's no way your hand is slipping up onto this blade. This one, you know, you could sort of imagine how in a, in a weird moment it could possibly happen. Although again, fairly unlikely. Now, what that translates into is your uses, okay? Uh, no doubt, in terms of ergonomics and comfort, the Recon 1 is the clear winner here. Just, there's not even, it's not a comparison. 
However, you may not need that. If it's primarily EDC tasks that you do, then this handle is gonna be very, very functional for everything that you would ever need it for, okay? So let's get down to, so those that's the handle comparison. Let's get down to my overall impressions on these blades. I think both of these are acceptable as an EDC blade. This one is sort of EDC plus tactical or combat. This one is more EDC with the possible option of being more combat. It's not specifically designed for that. It's designed more to be an EDC blade. Where I do see this giving you the extra option is if you're the kind of person who works in an office, if you wear slacks, if you wear like a suit, uh, you could carry this knife as sort of a gentleman's folder that's still as tough as nails, okay? You know, you've got a gentleman's folder here that you could chop down a tree with, all right? Um, and so if that's if you need something like that, then this is a really, really good option. It doesn't make you sacrifice a lot of performance to get a knife that, that goes well with, you know, a, a nicer sort of office dress-up environment. The, the Recon 1, yeah, it is not meant to be worn with, with <laughs> suit pants at all. All right. Uh, could you get away with it? Uh, probably, but it's pretty heavy and it's pretty big. And if you pull this out to, you know, peel your apple at lunchtime, people are, might be like, holy cow. Uh, they may still do that with this knife, but not to the same extent. So that's where I see these kind of diverging, okay? Uh, both of these are extremely good. There's a ton of utility. There's a ton of toughness. And both of them will ultimately get most jobs done that you need to do. However, the, the Recon 1 is going to be a little more suited to um, maybe combat or even, you know, certain hard use tasks. The Code 4 is going to be a little more suited to general EDC and possibly even, you know, gentleman's carry. So that's how these two break down. Really, I've got to say that I'm a huge fan of both of these knives. I think these are both designs where um, Cold Steel has really, really done a great job. And I would recommend either one or both of them, just that they, there are some nuanced differences that exist. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And I will say one other thing. I am going to do a comparison between the Recon 1 and the Ultimate Hunter, as well as the, the Code 4 and the Ultimate Hunter. That'll be coming up down the road. All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll talk to you soon.